morning. Glad you could join us today for our Riding on Course broadcast. We're getting started here. I want to get kind of a sound check if you're joining us uh, for the first time. We'd like to ask you to maybe share this with your family and friends. And uh, let me see if I can get this pulled up. I'll turn this down just a little bit on the music. And get out of there real quick. Okay. Let me see, guys, if we can pull this up watch this on the monitor all right good morning what a great day it is to be alive and serve the Lord we are excited I'm going to pull this up into a different <clears throat> monitor good morning my name is Scott Mendes I'm with Western Harvest Ministries we're so excited that you could be with us for uh, a message this morning a Bible study together Harvest there we go right there we can see a few of us awesome Thank you for jumping on here. We're going to get started in just a second. So glad that you could be with us. Get our word opened up here this morning. God is good. Amen. All the time. Let's go over here real quick to one of the scriptures that's on my heart. Praise the Lord. Okay. Well, we're excited that you can be on here. We're going to give just a few minutes for some of those to jump on. We're going to be live here for the next little bit. And uh, each week what we like to do is we like to introduce ourselves and uh, open up with uh, prayer. And then we're going to have a time in the Word of God together. And I just pray that this is uh, relative uh, to the times that we live in. And applying God's Word and His principles over our life with you, our friends and partners. If you're tuning in for the first time, my name is Scott Mendes. I'm with Western Harvest Ministries. We uh, have a national outreach with some of, uh, some friends of ours through the FCA, the FCA Cowboy Chapter, and uh, our national partners. You can go to USAYO, that's Y-O, USAYO dot org, and uh, have some of our my partners and friends that I speak with throughout the nation. We can come into uh, your community, your uh, your activities. Uh, we, we do a lot of rodeo western outreach where we've got guys from the NFL and NBA and feats of strength and Native Americans, uh, female NBA basketball coaches. We're so excited. Uh, anyway, having said that, as everybody's jumping on here this morning, we're going to get ready to get started. Let me know in the comments if you kind of have some thumbs up on the volume. I think our sound has generally been pretty good. And so if you can see this or give us some thumbs up, we would greatly appreciate it. Those of you that are watching on here, we've got a handful of people. And uh, let's see here. All right. Good morning, Miss Carrie, Miss Ford. A lot of you are jumping on. So, all right. Well, we're excited to be with us. So what we want to do now, uh, some more people are jumping on. We want to pray. And I'm excited to bring God's uh, message to us today. So there's a lot of announcements that we may have. People are calling in. I want to just say thank you. For your faithful support we have wonderful partners throughout this nation and we love coming to you whether we can get there physically uh, at venues or through technical means such as uh, uh, this message this morning coming to you through your computers and phones so having said that we all know that our world is in disarray right now we're seeing birthing pains of the signs and the times that we live in and so each week as we minister god's word together uh, it is my, my deepest and sincere desire and challenge is to bring an encouraging word that we can meditate on, that we can apply to our life, that will help us to be stronger spiritually and physically and financially, all the above. God wants to prosper us, and that is done decently, fitted, joined together, attached to his word. So my message this morning is a great message. I think you'll enjoy it. Please get your Bible out, just a piece of paper, write down something that God lays on your heart, and then go back and research some of the scriptures that we have. So lots of physical needs, a lot of things going on, a lot of things being uh, birthed, a lot of decisions about should I keep my job, should I, you know, a, a loved one that's lost, praying for, for them to come to their senses, all of the above. These are things that we deal with uh, in the household of God as you as a believer if you don't know jesus christ as your lord and savior i pray that this message won't go over your head but yet it, your heart will be open and the spirit of god will resonate in you that this is the step that you need to take we cannot no longer operate under misconception uh, uh, deception all of the above all those things can hinder us 
and hold us back from God's very best in our lives. So we love you. Will you agree with me this morning over the word of God? And then at the end of this, I will pray with you and we'll close out with a little bit of housekeeping as well, some contact information and so forth. Praise God. Glad you could be with us. Remember, join this message. Interact with it. Uh, my wife and other partners are on there. They're, they're, they're ready to talk to you. I don't want to be distracted by it, so I usually come back after the message is over and talk to you guys. So we're blessed. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up this time that you have segregated, separated and, and set aside, Father. Sanctify the time of the reading of your word, Father. Let what is said be of you, Father. Help me, Lord, to present this as you showed this to me, as we studied it, as we prepared it, Lord God, may it go forth into the lives of those that are watching, Lord, those that will see this uh, a year down the road, Father God, wherever it may go out through these channels in this technical world that we live in, Lord, we are to use this uh, for your glory, to be a witness, Lord God. So thank you for the word. Thank you for every one of our partners. Lord, I pray if somebody is is sick and not feeling good, Lord God, their physical body is down, Lord, I pray you, the great physician, would heal and minister to their mind, their spirit, and their body, Lord, emotionally, physically, and all there in between, Father. We know that your word will not return back void, and it will accomplish what you send it forth to do. So today, Father, bless your people by the studying of your word, Lord God. And, Lord, I pray that people draw close to you, Lord God, pressing into that time where you can minister to them, Lord. You can speak to them, not the world, not the news, not the people around us, not even uh, people with good intentions, Lord God. It, we have to know that it's from you, and today's message will help us to do that, Father. So I thank you for all that you desire to do, all you are doing, and all that you will do in the lives of your children. And we pray for those, Lord, that have never, ever made you the Lord of their life. We pray that this message will encourage them and strengthen them to walk in a covenant relationship with you, Father God. We ask these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, I'm so excited that you can be with us. We have a few more people jumping on. And uh, this morning's message is going to be uh, very exciting. And again, we're so glad that you could tune in with us and be with us today. So, if you have your your Bibles, I want to tell you, <clears throat> I want to I want to uh, go to you on a couple of things today. I believe that what we're going to minister on is going to be a message that is uh, really good. Now, if you know, if you've been watching and following us every week, I tell uh, a lot of my messages are kind of geared towards the fact of you know discernment and understanding. Um, the revelation of God's word, him speaking to you. <clears throat> and so today I felt, I felt that it was very important for us to talk about God's truth comes by. Now, depending on where you go to church and the ministries you follow, what you were raised in, there's interpretations, there's a lot of things out there. But I want to tell you that this morning, God's truth comes by. And then I want to add this. Now, it's a little bit too long of a message to just add it in the title. So the title of today's message is God's Truth Comes by Revelation and Illumination. Now, now let that sink in just a little bit. God's truth comes by revelation and illumination, not by intellectualizing. Now, that's a big word, and I have a hard time even reading that. But I'm just telling you that there's a difference between God's wisdom and the world's wisdom. And sometimes in your decision making and your walk with God, we can get those things mixed up. And that's exactly what Satan comes to do, to still kill and destroy. So I want to open up. We're going to have some time here and we're going to get to some scriptures, a lot of statements, a lot of little short stories. But there's about seven points in this message that I want you to, to lay hold of and understand and jot them down. This is how... God speaks to us, how his word comes to us by revelation and illumination and bears witness with our spirit. God provided us, <clears throat> excuse me, the Holy Spirit in our life. So here's a, here's a summary. Let's get started in today's message. If you want to go ahead a little bit, you can go to uh, Matthew 16, verses 15 through 17. I'll get there, but let me read this. Don't uh, intellectualize the gospel. You know, one time a pastor said he was right. He said, God's truth comes to us. A pastor's truth said that God comes to us by revelation and illumination and by the Holy Spirit. 
not by the mental effort or the matter of a well of how well we intentionalize it or, or, or how intending we are to receive God's word. So we need to understand what is truth, what is light, what is darkness, and what is lie. <clears throat> Excuse me. So today's message is God's truth comes by revelation. Now I'm going to try to get a little tricky here, but I want to read something real quick before we get started. I want to read to you. I found these and I'm going to bring these to you. These are the biggest, 12 biggest lies uh, that the enemy has projected on our generation and over our uh, the humanity. Listen to this. I'm going to read these really quickly and then i got to get back to our message. Uh, there is no such thing as an absolute truth. Again, these are lies. And then I'm going to teach this morning on how God's truth comes by revelation and illumination and not by intellectualizing the Word of God. So, there is no such thing as an absolute truth. People are inherently good. No one should be offended. Man and woman are equal. Uh, a, a, a fetus isn't a human. The world is overpopulated. Americans are greedy and self-centered. Islam is a religion of peace. The Jews stole Jerusalem. The earth is billions of years old. There is no God. Jesus was just a good man. Well, as we see here, these are things that we're trying to counter all the time in our intellect. But the word of God comes to us by revelation and illumination, and it comes. God knew that we would have a, 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 a need, and so he provided a way of the Godhead to teach us, to be a comforter, and that is by way of his Holy Spirit, not by our own mental efforts. When you get saved, hopefully you're not saved by hyper grace, sloppy grace, uh, uh, new age, secret societies, using the Bible to bring you in and then teaching their uh, darkness and their rituals. This is not a good thing. So let's look at Matthew 16, verses 15 through 17. Now, some of these, I, I went ahead and I studied these, and I like the King James. I know I teach out of the New King James a lot, but I like the King James in some of these very foundational scriptures. Matthew 16, 15, it says this, and this is all a summary and an introductory to the title of today's message. God's truth comes by, and you can fill in the blank. But today for this message, I put in revelation, illumination, and not that by intellectualizing. Many people are saved. But they walk in their own mental efforts and discern the word and do what they feel is best for their life. They can be led astray very powerfully. Matthew 16, 15 through 17 says this. But, but what about you, he asked. Now this is the Lord talking to Simon Peter. He says, <clears throat> says what about you, he asked. Why do, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed of you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. So we see instantly right here, there are some really uh, wonderful things that God has provided in his word. So how did Peter learn about the great truth that Jesus was the promised Messiah? By divine revelation and not by flesh and blood so this is an indicator for you and i that when we get saved we are to renew our mind to study ourselves to study to show ourselves approved and to know the scripture know the scripture means know jesus to know jesus means to be powerful and effective the way god created us by design not by chance the theory of darwin and evolution you just did not evolve but you were created by a loving god and who we should serve and honor and worship with all of our heart. So it wasn't by flesh and blood, but it was by revelation. And that not by human wisdom or intellect. There's a lot of guys that spend many hours in seminary. There's a lot of guys that, that uh, go up the corporate church ladder and they just feel that they've got a market on, on control and power and structure. God never intended the church to run off of the successful corporate structure of the world. He intended it to run by revelation, illumination, and by the Holy Spirit, and not just our uh, mental effort and intellectualizing 
the scripture. I pray that this helps us this morning. I need to move on fast because I've got a lot of points, a lot of scriptures, and a lot of things to help us to stimulate what we're talking about this morning. So, uh, one time you'll understand that there that, that somebody would might have told you that the only way that you're ever going to understand God's word is by revelation. God revealing to you what you need at that specific divine time in your life. Now, if you don't go to God or you only go once in a while, uh, you're not going to get revelation knowledge. You're not going to discern God wanting to spend time with you. So you understand that the Bible is going to be revealed to you by revelation. And so all of us, when we start our journey of faith and walking with God, we're probably a little bit skeptical about these type of things. So what we want to do is as you grow in faith and you realize that it is correct to understand that God's revelation and illumination through the Holy Spirit will reveal his words will help us to be corrected. And so though, although our minds are certainly involved in our Christian faith, the receiving of God's truth is partially, uh, primarily, excuse me, so the, so the receiving of God's word and his truth is primarily that of a spiritual level and not one of intellectual so keep that in mind this morning as we read and as we study God's Word for this morning now let me give you another scripture Romans <coughs> excuse me Romans chapter 8 and verse 16 says it this way ready I'm gonna read it the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God why do we know how do we know that we are born again children of God? The Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit. So inside of your physical body, you have a, a mind, a will, an emotion, and you have a spirit, life, that only God created. And even with all the pollution and all the devastation and all the AI and all the stuff that elite, wicked men are trying to do in our world, life comes from God. And it is by revelation. He wants to know you. He has already predestined us. So to know that you are a child of God and born again, the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit at the deepest spiritual levels within us. We have that DNA to know that in that spiritual level within us. And that is exactly how Peter knew that he was the Messiah and that it was not revealed by flesh and blood, but it was revealed by his Father in heaven that Jesus was Jesus. Do you and I receive that this morning? I know that there's a God. I know that there is a Son of God. He came. He lived. He died for my sins. He died for you. And he died for the sins of the world. And, and, and nothing that man comes up with can ever change that fact. No matter what you try to indoctrinate me with or what the world tries to indoctrinate you with, you are indoctrinated when you spend a multitude of time in front of a screen or in front of a group of people that are not edifying you and building you up in the light or in the truth of the gospel. So be careful what you entertain. And whatever you entertain is what you are going to become. So, we talked already this morning, God's word and truth, God's truth comes by revelation and illumination, and that not by of uh, intellectualizing uh, our interpretation of the word or what our professors in seminary, sem did I say seminary? It's seminary rather than cemetery. It's kind of an inside pastor joke. We talk about that. Look, there's nothing wrong with studying God's word and having credentials all over your wall. But you can do all those things and yet find yourself farthest from the truth. And so I want to talk to you today about understanding that God wants to have revelation in your life. And that's how he brings his life to his word to life to you. Now, 1 Corinthians 2, 11 through 14. I've got a lot to read. So I want to just keep moving this morning so that we don't get trapped in a time constraint uh, at the end of today's message. And I pray that this is blessing you. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 through 14. Now again, we're talking about revelation and illumination through the Holy Spirit, not our intellectual and not our mental efforts of discerning what God, what you think God would be best to do in your life over those around you, over your family. We have to submit, yield, humble, renew to the scripture. Those promises are guaranteed to manifest in your life. So 1 Corinthians 2, 11 through 14 says it this way 
For, for who knows a person's thought except their own spirit within them? In the same way, one, uh, in the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. So he's telling us right there that even God knows his own thoughts, but it's through his spirit. If he gives us his spirit, then we're going to know his thoughts. But we need to define where these thoughts are coming from and where you're spending your attention. If you listen to all the scientific reports, all the media, uh, false doctrines, false denominations, you could be deceived because there's some fundamental things that if you believe them, they will produce uh, problems in your life. The thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Uh, what we have received is not of the Spirit of this world, but the Spirit whom is from God. Again, 1 Corinthians 2, verses 11 through 14. So that we may understand what God has freely given us, that we that uh, this is what we speak, not in words thought taught by human wisdom, but by words taught through or by the Spirit, explaining spiritual realities, the spiritual uh, the Spirit taught words. So we see right here that God is wanting to speak to us through His Spirit. And if we don't ever do our research, we don't study to show ourselves approved, we're going to allow the system of the world and their corporate uh, religions to overtake our heart and it will produce human wisdom. And human wisdom will leave you short, it will lead you in bondage, and it will lead you separated from God's very best. Now going on it says, the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God. So that's what it means to be saved. If you are saved, you can accept and be taught by the Spirit of God. But if you're a convert and you label yourself a Christian, but you never have ever sold out to the things of God and positioned yourself for His very best, then it's just it's going over. We're, we're in, in, in intellectualizing uh, the Scripture, and it just doesn't produce good fruit. So the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit so how do we understand that what uh, what God has freely given us we understand the truth of God as we are taught by the spirit the things of God are discerned only through the spirit so God's word even when he talked in parables to uh, his disciples the people around him did not understand those parables but if God's heart was connected with their heart they would understand that he's teaching prophetically. He's teaching on things that he saw his father do and say, and it was coming into their lives. But there was a unity there. There's a seal for those that aren't in Christ Jesus that they don't understand, and they're in, in, in intellectualizing, and, and they don't understand. Just take the communion, the Holy Communion. It, Jesus said, this is my body, the bread broken for your sins. Uh, you know, As you eat of this, well, they're looking at it as how are we going to eat of the of the Messiah's flesh. You know, this doesn't make sense, but these are spiritually discerned things that the Holy Spirit are ministering to us and even to the apostles and, and, and the disciples at those times. So they're taught by the Spirit. The things of God are discerned only through the Spirit. Theologians make systematic distinctions between revelation and illumination. So you can do your own study and say, has God's word been revealed to me? Has it been illuminated? Did it bear witness with my heart? How do you know that you are saved and your name is written in the Lamb's book of life? You've got to know that. And so when you know that, it, it's because of revelation, divine revelation that God brought his word into your life. So the purpose of all these things today are the cooperative sense uh, that the Holy Spirit illuminates us. He edifies us. He builds us. He draws us into a song, a message, a, a devotion. He speaks to us if we are sensitive to that revelation and we allow the Holy Spirit. Never read your Bible without asking God to show you what it is that he wants to speak to you about. He wants to shed light upon God's revelation of his truth to mankind. So in other words, the understanding of divine truth. How do we understand God's word? The the, the devil will tell you it's hard. The King James is Old English. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Just like the previous 12 lies that I read to you. These lies are embedded in, in doctrine to come against the foundation of, of the men and the disciples and those that believe in God's word. 
to this very day and even of old and even if you believe the word today then the manifestation of the things to come we will be ready we will be joyful we will be strong the joy of the lord is our strength so we want the revelation of his truth to mankind and the words of understanding the divine truth per, are, is primarily a spiritual process that's what all this is about is to help us this morning to understand it is a spiritual process and not one of mental or intellectual capabilities when you got saved god changed your heart but he left the mind up to you to renew it to his word you spent time in that word you're going to grow now listen to this just a statement that offers many modern thinkers in our so-called age of reason we are fooled into thinking that mankind can grasp god's truth only by intellectual force it's a lie you if you're two years old if you're 10 years old or 110 years old intellectual uh, abilities and mental abilities go out the window God gave those brain to us to worship. A lot of my rodeo coaches and people back in the 70s came out, new age religion and all this kind of stuff. And, and, and you know, it was all about psycho-cybernetics, controlling your mind. Uh, but I said, listen, why don't we worship the one that gave us our minds and he gave us the ability to run that mind and to set it on the things above. And so our minds are very key to the ability to discern illumination and revelation rather than intellectualization. Amen. So so, so grasp that. Uh, unfortunately, laboring under this type of wrong thinking will uh, get you in trouble. An intellectual endeavor, uh, it, it, it can uh, it helps us in personal, uh, personal, personal saving relationships with Jesus. My intellectualization of the gospel uh, is a form of uh, of life-changing revelation and truth so we've got to understand uh, very uh, upfront what it is so now let's, let's let's go on to a little bit more scriptures basically what I've said this morning is that if we're gonna have uh, divine revelation and illumination through the Holy Spirit we got to welcome the Holy Spirit into our life give him place let him minister to us now here's the scripture and it is a spiritual process not one just by mere human efforts of intellectual so that let's just Put that to rest. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 19 says this, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. So you can't stand behind in front of God with all your degrees, whatever they may be, religious degrees, doctrinal degrees, theology, all those things are wonderful. They'll show that you love God enough to study his word, but many times just mere mankind gets in the way. And some doctrines get twisted over the centuries and these beliefs that there's more than one way to heaven or this religion is of peace or or, or or whatever it may be and so just understand that it is important when, when we say it's simple it is simple but it's not simple in the excess of we have to confuse it or intellectualize it to apply it to our life God said that we are to have childlike faith so mortal men tend to glorify the intellect. Everybody wants to say how smart somebody is. But the smartest men I ever knew sat on their porch and tore up blue jeans and overalls with calluses on their hand. Their Bible tore up, marked up, chalked up, lived by every day. And, and their name may not be infamous or in the halls of fames or in society and, and all these awards, but they are mortal men that love God and God blessed them and they were strong and they didn't use intellectual ability they used divine revelation and that's what I'm talking about the ranchers and farmers and cattle industry coaches uh, football franchises whatever you wherever you are today if you want to run on intellect uh, some of those things may be success principles and be good and disciplined and you need them but where does your truth come from and how do you counterpart a lie the lies that we read a minute ago that's what the world is, 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 is doing. But when we read the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit, that primary level at which God communicates to us, his spirit with our spirit. The spirit with our spirit. Peter didn't figure, Peter didn't figure out Jesus' Messiahship by his own natural fa faculties. He did not do that, but rather it was revealed to him by God and, and for that Jesus said Peter was blessed 
You are blessed when you spend time in God's presence with His Holy Spirit teaching you revelation knowledge, uh, wisdom of His Word, not of the world. So you counter the world by going to the Word of God and you apply the truth of God's Word. You meditate on that. You think about how can I position myself, relieve myself of the Babylonian debt system. You come into the principles of God. You begin to apply what He's called us to do uh, even as our physical bodies are mortal, our spiritual man is being renewed by faith every day. We do not walk by sight alone. We walk by faith. And so we see this here. God's primary level to communicate with us is with his spirit bearing witness with us. There's a lot of intellectual Christians that I know, and they are powerless. They have a form of God's godliness, but they deny his power. And that means rejecting the teacher. That means rejecting the comforter. So the Spirit of God is there, the Holy Spirit of God. So th let's go on and talk about things. I'm not suggesting that our minds have no place in living our, out our Christian faith. In fact, Jesus extorted us, love, your, uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. Luke 10, verses 27. The Apostle Paul encouraged us, to pray with the Spirit and pray with understanding. 1 Corinthians 14, 15. The Word of God is powerful, sharper, alive than any two-edged sword, piercing needs and division, soul, spirit, joint, and marrow. The discerner of the intents of our heart. God's Word, when you're, when you're down, you're depressed, you're lonely, you need to press into God because He, he is all-sufficient. And when He tells us here to pray always and to love your neighbor as you love yourself, with all your mind. That doesn't mean just on Sundays. That doesn't mean when, when you feel like it. It means all the time. God is waiting to bless you. And when his divine revelation of his word through his Holy Spirit comes into your life and it overrides your intellectual ability to think about how you would do it raised on how you were raised or how you were taught in your seminaries, in your doctrine degrees, wherever you are, in your psychological practices, those things are in vain compared to the Word of God and His promises. Amen. So let's go on. Today we want to talk about the importance of our mind, but rather to clarify the fact that our primary level at which God communicates His truth to us is a spiritual level, not an intellectual one. A wise believer looks for the spiritual to inform the mental. That's what I'm saying. It counterwrites. If you're so intellectual that you're not spiritual, you're wrong. But here's what it does. A, a, a wise believer looks at the spiritual to inform the mental, not vice versa. Now, obviously, I've read my message in my notes this morning, and so I get sometimes ahead of myself. But that's what we need to do. How does God work speak uh, God's truth come to us? This message today ties all the previous messages that I've delivered with you, talking about don't be deceived. Don't let the devil into our life. Don't let him lie to us. If there's a lie, uproot it. The world right now is lying to us as never before. They want what we have, the DNA of God in our body. God created Genesis. He set this world in motion. He made Adam and Eve. Man cannot play with the human nature of how we are made, and that's exactly what they're trying to do. So let's let's be strong with that. Let's, let's clarify that. The fact, uh, what we need to focus on, let's move on and ride into this. Now, these are the points I wanted to get to today. Some of these I can go quickly, but there's several points. Now, I want you to write these down and meditate on. How does God's truth reveal to us? The number one way that God's truth is revealed to us is the Word of God. John 8, 31 and 32, we all know it. It says this, Then, uh, then Jesus said to those Jews that believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then my then ye are my disciples indeed. He didn't just tell them if you go to church, you're my disciples. He said, if you continue in my word daily, then indeed you are my children. And he says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. How do we get free? By abiding in God's word, by revelation, not intellection, intellectualizing the word of God. Now, the word of God uh, the word of the Lord is spiritual. John 6, 63 says this, The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So he didn't say the words that I speak to you, you can intellectualize them and come up with whatever you want. No, he said they are spirit. 
And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so as we press into the Holy Spirit, He teaches us. He raises us. He overrides our intellect. Which, as you grow as a Christian, day by day, you set your mind on the things of God. Then we're going to make better decisions. So let's continue uh, looking at what the Lord, uh, the Lord's word that we want to, to know as truth. So Psalms 119 verses 105. And verses uh, 130, it says this, tying this, these two verses together from one uh, from Psalms 119. It says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy interest of thy words giveth light. You want to have light in the dark path that you're on today, it must be illuminated by the Holy Spirit of God coming into our life and blessing us and revealing his word, revealing his plan. So it giveth light and it also gives understanding to the simple amen let's go on god's word will enlighten us it is a lamp unto our feet it guides our feet it illuminates our path all these things are so important when his word enters into us it gives us understanding and so for this very reason every christian should uh, be dedicated daily reader to understanding the word of god and the scriptures of the bible be dedicated be devoted. Do that before you do anything towards your personal life, towards your family, towards decision, your company, your career, and numerous truths of great revelation for your life. God has all that stored up. So the number one way is the Word of God. Now I'm going to speed up a little bit. The Spirit of God. John 14, 26. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have said to you. So through the Word of God, through the Spirit of God, He's going to quicken us. He's going to have revelation. He's going to remind you that He had, He helped Moses. He helped Abraham. He made promises that we are walking in today. He's got a covenant. He had the New Testament. He's got the, uh, the Old Testament for shadow and type to, to encourage us that God will never leave you nor forsake you. So the Holy Spirit is God's heaven-sent teacher. You must know that. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will teach us all things, not just some things. God's not uh, a, a, a person that's withholding or God does things uh, in, in a way that we don't understand. No, he wants to reveal that. So that does not discount that the level of what Ephesians 11 says teaches us, uh, teaches but the Holy Spirit who, uh, who inspired the Word of God is by far the most capable one to teach us His truth. So my word to you this morning is God's truth comes by revelation and illumination and not by intellectualizing. So stop thinking so much about what you think is best for your life or what somebody has indoctrinated you with and rehabilitated you with to think that I must do this, I have to have that, I gotta go this way. Because if you do that, you'll miss your destiny. You'll miss your purpose of what God created you for and why he gave you spiritual gifts, why he gave you discernment, why he said that the truth that you know will set you free. So when you pray and you go into the word of God, every time you read the scriptures, read Psalms 119, 18 and have something like this to the Lord before you get into the word. Open thy, uh, open thy my eyes. So he's saying, open my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. When you read the scriptures, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the truths that you are reading. Don't read it just to, to, to get through a Bible reading praying in a year and never retain it. Meditate on it day and night so that all of your ways will be successful. So another way through God's Spirit... Uh, scripture that he speaks and communicates to us is John 16 verses 12 through 13 and he says this I have much more to say to you more than you can now bear John 16 verses 12 through 13 I don't want to get ahead that you just write the scriptures down you can go back and read them but I'm reading them verbatim here he says but when but when he the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truth he will not speak on his own. See, too many people are speaking on God's behalf, and they're in error because that's not how God intended that they play on itchy ears. They deceive. They come in sheep's clothing inward. They are, they are vicious, and they destroy. So be careful what you allow down in your heart. 
It will produce a harvest. Uh, he will speak only what he hears, and he will only tell what he what is yet to come. So the Holy Spirit is our teacher. He is being he is, he is being the divine third person of the Trinity. He knows all truth. Therefore, he is uh, eminently qualified and capable of guiding us into all truth. Acts ten verses nineteen through twenty. We're still talking about God's Holy Spirit. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, uh, the Spirit said to him, Simon, three men are outside looking for you. Uh, so go up, uh, so go downstairs, but do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. So we see very clearly the Holy Spirit is ministering to Peter, and he's giving him instruction. God wants to give you instruction about what to do over your job, what to do about the pandemic, what to do about this uh, you know, thing that you get in your arms and so forth. God is wanting to speak to you. So he speaks through his word. He speaks through the teacher, the Holy Spirit. Now he also speaks to us through teachers, through anointed ministries. Amos 3, 7 says it this way. Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plans to his sovereign, uh, to his servants and the prophets. Now I just want to say this very clearly right here. Not everybody you hear and see is a prophet from God, even if they tell you that they are. You need to be very careful of who you entertain and who you follow. But there are prophets of this day for the time that God has sent into our world. You need to, to study. You need to hear them. If it doesn't line up with the Word of God, you throw that out immediately. Because they will play on our emotion. They will steal. They will lie. They will do whatever. So back in those times, we see that God did receive uh, the Old Testament. They did receive a lot of revelations that he had plans for his servants and the prophets. So we see that in there. So again, through anointed ministries and teachers, God speaks to us. Uh, Ephesians 3, verses 4 and 5 say it this way. I am watching my time. I've got a few more minutes, just about 10 more minutes. So I thank you for those that are staying with us. And again, share this message with many others. Ephesians 3, verses 4 through 5 says it this way. In reading this, then... You will be able to understand my insight into the mysteries of Christ. Paul wrote this letter to, a, to the church of Ephesus. And Paul's writing this letter and he says, excuse me, in reading this, you'll be able to understand my insight into the mysteries of God. So the more of God that you want is the more time you spend in his presence, allowing his Holy Spirit and his word to, to penetrate our intellectual minds, our mortal bodies. We override that with scripture with relationship not religion not with religious activities not with church entertainment but with revelation and then we apply it to our life so uh, which was not made known to the people in other generations as it has been known has been revealed by a spirit of God's holy apostles and prophets so Paul was saying very clearly you're gonna have understanding and the mysteries of Christ if you read these things, but they're going to be given to you down through the laws that may not have even been given to the people of old. So the Holy Spirit is not going to withhold any good thing from you. Amen. Several decades after uh, Jesus had returned to heaven, the apostles and the prophets continue. Now I'm talking about anointed ministries and teachers. And so he allowed his church and those ministries uh, he was given to them, uh, known as in the scripture, uh, in Ephesians and so forth, you see a five-fold ministry. The apostles, uh, excuse me, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers. And, and so we have offices. Know your office. Know your election. If you're called to do these things, get into study and, and get involved in ministries that raise you up to help you to discern how to use your gifts. That is so important to have mentors and, and pastors in our life. Good pastors, accountable pastors. Don't just read a book and get swept into this big mainstream thing that's out there. It takes you farther away from the truth of God's word because it's all man-made. So be discerning and be blessed. There's people with gifts. So let's move on. It talked about the word of God, the spirit of God, the anointed ministries. Another way that God speaks to us is through visions. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but I'll read scripture. Daniel 2, verses 19, 22 through 23 says this. Then the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. 
he reveal he re, he revealeth the deep and secret things that thou hast made known unto us the king's uh, 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 may know to us the king's matter so we see in visions God is speaking to Daniel we can go back today and understand if God spoke to Daniel in visions he can speak to you in a vision also there's a lot of other people uh, let me just say this Acts 2 17 I've got to jump over some of my notes this morning but in Acts 2 17 in the last day God said I will pour out my spirit upon all people your sons and your daughters will prophesy your young man's young men will see visions your old men will dream dreams and so Daniel's and uh, uh, Daniel and other people uh, in the Bible uh, were were spoken to by God through vision so through vision anointed teaching through the Spirit of God the Holy Spirit himself who is given that office to teach us we cannot eliminate him now granted many people have made flaky uh, things about it they're so spiritual that they're just flaky I'm talking about being grounded in the scripture I'm talking about allowing God to raise us up being accountable having uh, accountability in our life being involved in outreach ministries being uh, in your local church that's teaching the Word of God if your church doesn't teach the Word of God and it's all about entertainment and philosophies and, 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 and Middle Eastern doctrine I'm telling you right now there, there's coming a big deal about making Sunday a national law uh, there's there's all kinds of compromising uh, with paganism and Catholicism and people are gonna say hey we all got to get along in unity we all serve the same God beware be careful because you can be led astray very easily if you don't have that connection with God this is how God's truth come to us not saying that every one of these points that I'm talking about this morning is exactly how God's gonna to speak to you but I'm saying he can he will if you're hungry and you're thirsty you will be blessed if blood and bone bone does not uh, uh, reveal it to you but the but the spirit of revelation of God reveals it to you it's going to be uh, owned and embraced by you so visions aren't necessarily a common occurrence but it can happen. Now let's move on. I've got a few more dreams. Matthew 1, uh, chapter, verse 20 through 21. Listen to this, Matthew 1. But after, he had this, but after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Take Mary home as your wife, because that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you shall name him Jesus because he will save people from their sins now verse 24 when Joseph had woke up he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded and he took Mary home to be his wife now that is that would be a whole teaching in and of itself but know this if God spoke to Joseph and gave him instruction Joseph could have either received it or rejected it but because he received it Jesus is in our world today we should be quick and obedient to run to what God is telling us to do. So moving on, we see a number of instances in the Bible uh, that reveal the importance of God speaking to his people through dreams. A word of caution here, not every dream that you have is going to be from the hand of God. But infallibly measure it and judge it by the infallible scriptures. If God speaks to you in a dream, He's got things for you to do or to reveal. You do as he says. He will say, this is not for others. This is for you. Uh, a lot of things can go on there, but I want to tell you that when God gives you a dream, yes, he can lead you through those measures. Can He can read, uh, lead you through visions. He can lead you through a lot of things because it's in Scripture. God is no respecter of a person. What he did for them, he'll do for us, meaning his apostles, his his. His disciples, he's wanting that. So I'm cautioning you, don't think that just every dream you have is from the Lord and you go out and blabber it to everybody. Joseph blabbered his dream to his brothers and he ended up in a pit. But that again, God turned a bad situation into a good thing. And so let's talk about another means that God can minister to us by revelation. There were things in the Bible called trans, tra uh, trances. This is where somebody goes out of body, and they, and they just stop for a moment. The Lord speaks to them. You're looking at their body, and the lights are on, but nobody is home. They're standing in the presence of God. 
So here's one that you can study for yourself. Acts chapter 10, verses 9 through 11, where Peter was on the rooftop. And this is what happened. Peter went up on the roof to pray. Where do you go to pray? We should follow this. Have a quiet time. Have a prayer closet. Go somewhere to pray. Peter was in his time with the Lord. What happened? He became hungry and he, and he wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven open up something like a large sheet being let down to the earth on its four quarters. Uh, four corners. Uh, and then in 11.5 it says, Starting from the beginning, Peter told them the whole story. And this is what he said. He said, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from the four corners of heaven. And it came to pass, there I was. So if God is speaking to Peter that way in his quiet time and leading him and ministering to him, strengthening him to show him those things where he was hungry, uh, what we should eat, what we should not eat, what, what we call dirty, God is called cleansed, understand. Be where you're at. People build denominations around what you can eat, what day you uh, offer as a Sabbath, and, and how you bring your sacrifices and how you confess your sins. This is man-made doctrine, denominational type stuff that hinder the effects and nullify the works of God. So trances, I want to go on right now. If God put Peter in a trance, he will do that. I've got library books in here where men have gone into trances. I believe that. Me personally, I've not been into a trance, but I know when I hear God's voice telling me to do something, it bears witness with my spiritual man, and I must be quick to do it right then. Not a week from now when I position my schedule to go do it, I must go serve God right now. God said, make this phone call, talk to that person, ask forgiveness, pray about that. Don't go here today. No, go there tomorrow. And when you do that, God is going to engage and open a door to where you're in the right place at the right time. Miracles happen. Amen. Going on, we got to talk about this. Angels. Now, I personally, that I know of, to the best of my knowledge, have, have never really seen an angel. But I know that the Bible says that when you entertain uh, strangers, be careful because you may be entertaining an angel. Now, there's been times where I'm driving down the road, rodeo, and I'm getting tired. I'm about ready to run off the road. Something grabbed my wheel and pulled me back. I would have to venture to say that that was one of my angels that God assigned for me that night, driving endless hours, rodeoing, and the hand of God pulled my steering wheel back and woke me up. And I remember those things. So I can't honestly say that I've seen angels. People have, and people can. Let's read the scripture, Acts 27. 1 through uh, verses 21 through 25. Acts 27, 21 through 25. I'm going to read it really quickly for time because I've only got a few more minutes and I've got a couple more points and then I want to pray with you. And I pray that today's message talking to you about how does God's truth come. It's not good enough for me to tell you to, to be in God's truth. I'm now telling you today how these how the means and the measures that it comes. It comes by revelation and intellectual illumi uh, illumination rather than intellectual mortal bodies of what we've been programmed with, what we've been raised as children growing up in a pagan world, in an atheist world, these beliefs, this new age culture, cancel culture, whatever you want to call these things. It's anti-God. They want to tear away at the fabric of our country. How do they do that? It's philosophy. It's a little bit of corrosion every day and then one day your car won't start. One day your heart is hard. And I'm asking you to come back. So he goes here, he says, After they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Man, you should have taken my advice and not to sail from Crete, and you would have spared yourself from the damage and the loss. But I urge you to keep up with your courage because not, none of you will be lost. And he goes on to say, I want to speed up and jump over this. It's a long passage of Scripture. Paul told them, that because they're sailing, that God, an angel, appeared to Paul and said, Have faith in him that you must be going to Rome to talk to Caesar. God has a destiny, a course for you to ride on. And if God has told you you're going to do something, you're going to do something. But these little adversities like shipwreck along the way, being where you're not called to be, doing what you weren't uh, equipped to do, you're going to have devastation. So God spared the sailor's life. Paul told them before it happened, the boat is going to be gone. So the angels of the Lord ministered to Paul. 
And if, and if the angels of the Lord ministered to Paul and gave him insight and gave him knowledge and told him to have faith, then it would happen. Excuse me. And certainly it did. So who were some of the people that uh, had angel visitations? We see clearly that it was Daniel, uh, the apostle Paul, John, Mary, Joseph, and others who received important revelations from God and from angel, uh, angelus, I can't even say this word, angelistic uh, visitations. So angels can come to you and minister God's truth to you, but uh, you understand that even in the Bible, the word angels uh, is a messenger, and in that capacity, we often see that they are to bring messages from God to his people. Now, there's warring and ministering angels, messenger angels, angels Michael, the archangel. There's going to be trumpets. We see this. We study God's word. So when all this begins to manifest in our life, we should be prepared and not caught off guard. And we should be saying, we don't know the hour and the time of when that's going to happen. So we don't want to be passive and in our complacency to the things of God. And we don't want to be believing false doctrine. So there's two more points that I want to make quickly. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, Acts 13 and verse 2. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for you, for me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work for which I have called them. So basically, we just see that there's an abundant example of scriptures where God is revealing things to his people, such as spiritual gifts and a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, a word of prophecy. Uh, even speaking in tongues, those things, you need to go in there and understand. Don't be afraid of those things. Go in and study them and understand how God desires to fill his people with revelation, knowledge of him, not knowledge of the wisdom of the world and intellect of our own flesh or our mortal. So we see right here when there's the gifts of the Spirit, there's, there's been situations where pastors have tried to uh, uh, um, expel and, and pray over people to be released from demonic possessions. And you can't do that on your own, but if God tells you or gives you insight to that, you can pray that over that person. You can first bind that strong man and cast that person out. That demonic spirit has a name. It has a, a jurisdiction. And so as a spirit-filled believer, you can take authority over what is putting somebody in bondage, but you better know how to fight spiritually. And you better have a discernment of what God is saying is putting that person in bondage. And if you're not fully charged, you're not going to be able to go in there and handle that situation. And the enemy has a lot of power because he is the prince of the air and an evil one. And he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So the gifts of the spirit God gave us, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of prophecy, all these type of things, revelation to his people are valuable sources. So uh, also a spiritual mind. Romans 8, 6 says this. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. It is very simple truth. Keep your mind attuned to spiritual things. That's why you can't live a double-minded mind. A double-minded man should not expect that he would receive anything from God uh, and, and not carnal things. That will keep you open and receptive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You don't just go around and mummer and just you know be a a, a, a babbling spiritual uh, you know crazy person but you're open you're talking to God you're, you have communication channels open the last one will tie it all together but be spiritually minded so that the Holy Spirit can bring to your remembrance 1 Corinthians 2 14 as we read earlier the things of God are discerned only through the Spirit this is a big bullet point that some denominations would re want to reject and not teach its people on and I'm here to tell you be spiritually minded have the gifts of the spirit have discernment have revelation knowledge allow the, the visitation of angels allow trances believe in these things because if God wants to speak to you that way he can and he will but he never will override your free will he never will force you to go out into your mountain top roof experience as Peter did and have a vision where there is no vision my people are destroyed now those are two different types of vision God is showing you where he wants your life to end up now the last one that I've got to read scripturally is that in prayer God reveals his truth 
and he can bring revelation. Luke 6, verses 12 through 13. This is the last thing that I want to read. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into the mountains to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. This is Jesus giving us an example that we should be praying to our Father in heaven through Jesus' name. And when it was day, he called all of his disciples to him, and he chose twelve, and he named them apostles. Jesus prayed all night in the morning it came, and he brought those people together and, and, and as an example of prayer. And he began to say with wisdom and revelation from God, he named them and he brought them in. So we are spiritual and all and we are very prayerful when we when we ask how. It seems to be sensitive. A pastor asked how he was sensitive in delivering his message to his church, and he simply said this. He said, it is in direct proportion to the amount of time that I spend in prayer. Man, that is powerful. You are only as powerful as the time as you spend in the presence of your Father. When he fills you, he gives you direction, he gives you provision, he gives you all those things, and if, unless you learn how to spend, Hear God's voice for yourself through divine revelation and illumination and not intellectualizing the word of God. We are going to just say there. So I'm going to sum this up that his truth to us and by his revelation and by it is by his revelation, not by our intellectual ability. Keep yourself open to various biblical ways that God can speak to you. Now I'm going to recap them really quickly because there's a lot of points in this message and then I'm going to pray with you. Number one, he gave us the word of God. Number two, the spirit of God, his Holy Spirit, anointed ministries and teachers. Uh, he gave us visions. He gave us dreams. He gave us trances. He gave us, gave us the uh, angels. He gave us the gifts of his spirit. He gave us the ability to be spiritually minded. He gave us the ability to pray, to know him, to discern what he has called us to do in our life individually corporately as a nation and as we wait for his anticipated return we must be prepared in our hearts if you've never made jesus christ the lord of your life the things that i talked about this morning may be foolishness to you but i ask that you be open and you be sensitive and you override your intellectual knowledge of how you were raised and what you've been taught in the world system you can't love God and you can't love the world together. One would be enmity with the other, enemy towards the other. And I'm asking you to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Stand in the wisdom of his word and you better know where you're going to be in this deceptive time that we live in. And you better know what you're putting into your heart, your mind, and your body. Because there's some things where we live that we're just going to separate the wheat from the shaft, the goat from the sheep. I love you. I bring these messages to you because I know they will make a difference in your life. I'm trying to grow in the admiration of the Lord continually over my life, my family. And I know you need to be in that same mindset as well. God will speak to you however you allow him. And he wants to speak to you. Will you pray this prayer with me today? Say, Dear Jesus, I've heard the word of God. Lord, I have been apart from you. I once knew you. I try to intellectualize your word and what I feel would be best over my life every day. But Jesus, right now, I ask forgiveness of my sins. I ask that you come in and override my intellectualizing of the word. I've known the word. I've known about your son. But it hasn't been with all my heart. I've restricted certain things deep within inside of my soul. Pains and hurts. And Lord, they keep coming up as strongholds and bondages over my life. I ask you right now, Jesus, forgive me. Well, I don't know what's best over my life. But I know you do, God. Jesus. I ask you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. And God, will you, raise, will you fill me with your Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, 
that I might be renewed in the image of my mind, that I might be spiritually minded and acceptable to dreams, vision, trances, the gifts of the Spirit. All these things are for today and not what teachers have told me otherwise. And so I ask today, Lord, to be in covenant with you. Thank you so much for being my Heavenly Father, filling all these voids and gaps that I've been painfully and discouraged and without hope. For Jesus is now my hope, and I anticipate your return. I will be ready. Help me to see myself the way you see me, to operate the way you created me to operate, and riding on course with your word. Until you return, I will be open and attentive to the revelation and illumination through your spirit over my life, my family, and my business, and my place in this world. Thank you, Jesus, for greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I give you, God, all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. And all of God's children said, amen and amen. Praise God. Well, if we're ever going to be long over a telecast, let it be in prayer. Look, we love you. Western Harvest Ministry loves you. USAO loves you. FCA loves you. We are so excited. To come to you today i pray that you will take these points go back and re-listen to this share it with your friends all these videos are being uploaded to youtube go to western harvest ministries on youtube you can grab videos of bull riding behind the scenes of all of our outreaches movie trailers documentaries we produce great things there we need your help to share it to others we're going to continue to be blessing you thank you for your partnership send us a testimony or a prayer request or what God is doing in your life. And until next week, remember, God loves you, we love you, and continue riding on course. We'll see you later. God bless. Thank you.